Hi. Okay. So shared screen, um, you'll find this under the, uh, you've got the tab AQA um, Poetry Anthology. Uh, going to be looking at that really more next term, uh, but just to get us in the mood for that, uh, we're going to do some, uh, hopefully sort of, a few sort of fun tasks towards the end of the, this half term. Um, as you can see, yes, it's, it's a very special day coming up um, this weekend. Are you aware of this, George? Sorry, Sam, my Wi-Fi was cutting out. Oh, I always cut out at these dodgy moments. Uh, what what day is this Sunday, George? Oh, it's Valentine's Day, sir. Uh, and I can hear your smile coming down the internet to me. Are you looking forward to it? Uh, I'm very excited, yeah. All right. Well, do you know what? Middleton College, through me, you know, is looking to help good people like you this year, as you can see. And I'm hoping you might get involved in this. You know, rather than sending off the um, the red roses, um, as you might do to a special someone, George, um, yes, this year you could send them a, a, a poem on Flipgrid that you think epitomises love. And you, don't, you can leave it anonymously, just hanging in the air there, and people can try and guess who it's meant for. Or you can sort of assign it to somebody, a, fat, a friend, or it can be assigned to, a, 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 you know, a well-loved pet, as I said before as well. Um, so there's all of these sorts of things that you can do. And so I thought to get us in the mood, to get us in the mood for this sort of thing, George, um, we'd look at a couple of, um, sort of uh, ideas about, you know, love poetry and get your, your ideas around that sort of thing. Um, Christian. Are you there, Christian? Sorry, sir, you cut out. Oh, dear. Sorry. Um, can you hear me now? OK, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no. I was saying, you know, after your uh, your your past um, uh, sort of uh, what should we call them? you know your past uh, extravaganzas on Flipgrid with uh, Leon and and George, I've got a little something that might be right up your street again to do on Flipgrid, you know. So be looking forward to that. So what we're going to look at first of all is a as a poem uh, by this chap here, John Cooper Clark, um, and he's defined as. A punk poet. He came. He came. Um, so sort of became well known during the eighties, nineteen eighties. That is. Um, and uh, just want you to take a little minute to sort of look at that image of of John Cooper Clark there. And I just want to get um, some ideas back from you about um, how you react to that picture because um, you know this is a poet. Is this how poets are meant to look in your mind? Um, what do you think? So a couple of minutes just to um, gather your thoughts. And then I'm going to get your reactions to that image first, okay? Um, so, Lottie, can I ask you first, how, how do you react to this image um, of the poet here? What, what, what does it make you think? Um, kind of like emo punk. <laughs> oh, I like that. An emo punk. Um, what do you mean by emo punk? <laughs> uh, I don't know, like emo punk rocker kind of thing. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, OK. You know, From like the yeah. 80s. Yeah, no, I can get that. And of course, obviously, kind of the dark clothing maybe taking you into that emo type thing. Yeah, very good. Um, Leon, what about you? How do you react to this image of John Cooper Clark? He's a bit of a strange one, I can tell. He's a bit of a strange one. Why do you think that? Why is he a bit of a strange one, Leon? I mean, the, the poem was good, but it's like really weird. It's a bit... Yeah, yeah, we're going to be looking at it a little minute, um, obviously. And uh, but at the moment, obviously, just sort of looking, concentrating on this image here. Um, but yeah, no, I like that. But I'll take that a bit of a strange one. Yeah, thank you. Um, Jess, what about you? How do you react to this this image? 
Um, he looks like a Queen tribute act. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, says like, the just... people that goes to Glastonbury when it's actually on <laughs> year in, year out. Yeah. No, he looks like like a one. No, he looks like the type of person who would sing like quite rocky, quite deep songs. Oh, well, actually, he has got quite a bit of a gravelly voice. Um, he he is uh, a man, Cunian. He he comes from Salford. Um, so you get very strong. And I would recommend um, afterwards, um, do go on YouTube because this is quite a well-known poem of his and, and he recites it um, a lot. He is a, he is a real sort of performance poet. And he, the, quite a, a group of them came out of the 80s in Britain. Um, it became a big thing to go around the country performing your poems. Um, and it became a kind of art form as well. And I'm pretty sure actually he, he has probably... I'm pretty sure he's played Glastonbury at some point. If you go back and, and look down through the annals, um, but to, to hear to hear his voice as a as a real Manchester strong Manchester accent that he's got there, um, but it is quite gravelly. And another bit I just found out this morning I didn't know um, he oh th this poem was actually used as well um, by the act Arctic Monkeys in one of their songs. They, they actually called it "I Want to Be Yours," and one of the members of Arctic Monkeys um, was. Um, heavily influenced by Cooper Clark as a lyricist. And so as a sort of a, a tribute to him, he, he used quite a bit of this. And I think the song is called I Want to Be Yours as well. And he, he uses the title um, and takes quite a bit of the lyrics out of there as well. So there you go. Um, but yeah, 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 I got that sort of gravelly voice. Thank you, Jess. Kimmy, what about you? How do you react to the image? Um. Like everyone else is saying, he kind of looks like you'd be into music in a way. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And see, so he does come out that sort of punk movement as well, um, which is uh, towards the end of the 70s. Um, okay, right, so we've got that. Um, George, how about you? How, how do you react to it? Would you like to go about dressed like this, George? No. No. What's your, what's your kind of reaction to him? Just looks like a bit of an odd bloke, really. Looks a bit of an odd bloke, yeah. What makes him look odd, do you think? Uh, the, the contradiction in what, she, what he's wearing. Okay, yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, Christian, how about you? R reminds me very much of Leon. Ouch. Leon, do you want to respond? I'll take that. He looks awesome, to be fair. Oh, oh, there we go. Thank you, Leon. Uh, so. Who knew that um, Christian wanted to pay you this compliment, Leon, eh? There we go. Even... Exclamation mark for it. Um, Matthew, what about you? He looks scruffy. You, you think he looks scruffy? Okay. Thank you. And um, one last one. Um, Natalie, what do you think? Um, how do you react to his image? No, anybody else want to chip in with um, a point of view about them then? No, we haven't got yet, haven't heard. No, okay. Let, let, well then, let's look at his um, let's look at his poem here, um, entitled "I Want to Be Yours." Now, this is whether you you uh, recognise it or not. In, in this instance, um, I want you to think of this. This this is his take on a love poem. Um, so, I'll just, without further ado, I'll just read it to you. So it's, I want to be yours. I want to be your vacuum cleaner, breathing in your dust. I want to be your Ford Cortina. I will never rust. If you like your coffee hot, let me be your coffee pot. You call the shots. I want to be yours. I want to be your raincoat for those frequent rainy days. I want to be your dreamboat when you want to sail away. Let me be your teddy bear. Take me with you anywhere. I don't care. I want to be yours. I want to be your electric meter. I will not run out. 
I want to be the electric heater you'll get cold without. I want to be your setting lotion, hold your hair in deep devotion, deep as the deep Atlantic Ocean. That's how deep is my devotion. OK, so what I want you to do now and do this in your one notes, please just jot down. Um, I want you to pop down your reaction to this poem. Do you uh, what do you think of it? Is it a love poem? Is, is that how you react to it? Um, what do you think about the language that he's using here? What about the imagery that he's creating? Just give me anything that you react to in this poem. Uh, I will give you, it's just gone 1521 now. Yeah, you can have five minutes to do that. So to 1526, okay? Five minutes just to react to that, please. Okay, thank you. OK, let's begin to um, get your uh, response and reaction to this. Uh, Liam, what did, what did you make of it? Do you see this as a love poem or do you see it as something else? Uh, I think it I think it would be a love poem, but I think it's a bit of a extreme love poem, really. 
Okay, so what makes you think that, um, Leon? He's just sort of going on and on and um, above and beyond with it, really. <laughs> what really needs to be said. <laughs> okay. Um, and then, well, obviously, we'll, we'll begin to maybe sort of talk about what our perceptions are, you know, of what makes um, a love poem and, and you know, it, maybe if, it's, if there's got to be a certain convention to it. But thank, thanks for that um, straight away, uh, Leon. Okay. Um, Lottie, what about you? How do you react to this poem? It's quite odd. Right. So what, 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 what for you makes it odd? In the comp in like saying like what he would be for that person that he's saying it to, quite odd things that he says. Yeah. So you'd be a bit worried if somebody said that to you. I want to be your vacuum cleaner. <laughs> okay, so we're getting these sort of strange comparisons being made, um, and it. Again, obviously, all of them they are from human being to kind of inanimate object. Um, OK, thank you. Um, George, what about you? How, what do you think of this? Sorry, did you say my name? So... I did say your name, George. Yes. Um, just trying to get your reaction to the John Kipper Clark poem. Uh, I just got it. It's a bit above and beyond. Well, that that that's that's taken that's taken Leon's words. Come on, you you can you can give us your own thoughts too. Is this something that you would send to someone, George? Uh, not personally, no. So why not? Why wouldn't you use that if you're going to sort of express your your feelings towards somebody and you thought, oh, I'm going to send them a nice poem sort of thing. Why wouldn't you send this one? What would stop you from doing it? Because uh, I don't think they take it very well. <laughs> why not? Because it's not exactly a ordinary thing to do nowadays. Right. Or <laughs> OK. So we'll get maybe that... Um, Maybe getting some unconventional ideas contained within this poem. Um, Kimmy, what about you? I think he's over exaggerating a little bit. Oh, do you want to expand on that? Where do you see the sense of over exaggeration, Kimmy? Um, saying like about the vacuum cleaning a bit and the raincoat, I don't. I just think he's over exaggerating it a little bit. Okay. Um. Oops. So I have some sense of sort of extreme ideas going on here. Thank you. Um, Matthew, what do you think? Um, he kind of sounds really obsessive. Oh. Right. OK, OK. Why do you think that? Because he just keeps talking about what he wants to do, it, like in weird ways. OK, OK. Um, yeah. Thank you. Um, Jess, how do you react to it? And I don't think he's really living in like a sort of reality in a way. <laughs> As in, he might not necessarily, he might not be talking about like a girl. He could be talking about like something else. I just don't know what he's, what he's, I don't know whether he's talking about a girl or whether he's talking, like, I, I don't know. I guess it's just something that he obviously understands what he's saying that we don't, or maybe he just sees it in a different perspective to what we see it as. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I can see why. Yeah, and again, you're all kind of going around that kind of same same area, you know, but the sort of unconventionality of it all, and because it's it, it's strange the sort of the comparisons that he's making, and you know, why would you want to sort of um, say this about a human being, sort of thing? Um, K, 
Okay. Um, good points there. Um, yeah. Ah, Christian, can I have your thoughts on this poem, please? I thought it was a bit bit weird. Right. So, so what for you um, is its weirdness then? What, what would you say? That's just plain weird. Just like every, uh, like all the lines and stuff, they're just like not normal. I, like you don't expect people to say those kind of things. Right. Okay. Yeah. Again, it's, it's, again, something else coming back to it is saying it's unconventional. Um, yeah, that idea, um, and, and so it, it, it kind of wrong foots as uh, uh, as as readers. Um, okay. Um, anybody get any other comments that they want to add here? Um, they want to sort of chip in with. Don't be shy. I want to um, uh, put something out there that you, you might think about. Now, obviously, or if I can ask a question in another way, what is your expectation of a love poem in that respect? Um, Jess, if I can go back to you for a second, because, um, again, you were, you were you were picking out that, again, you didn't realise that you weren't sure if it was directed at a person or an object or, or, or something else sort of thing and I know obviously thinking about things in different ways. In your mind, what do you think a love poem should kind of look like? What should it contain, do you think? Um, I guess like more real life sort of gestures is in like I understand what he's I don't understand what he's saying but it's in the comparisons that he's made with like I want to be your vacuum cleaner I just it doesn't really scream romantic like I do something a bit more like <laughs> emotional like something that you could actually get touched by okay um <laughs> uh, I you know but then uh, it's interesting that you say um uh, about those sort of the, the, you're looking for something you know that, that's kind of real and whatnot um but anyway i mean at the end you know he talks about deep deep devotion does he know it deep as a deep atlantic ocean that's how deep is my devotion uh, is that not an expression of um emotion there uh, it, Jess? it is it is yeah and that's what i mean with like the way that he must understand it in his own interpretation because obviously we see it as quite weird but if mm. that's the way that he documents his love, then that's how it done. Fair play to him. Yeah, fair play. I just, fair I play would... <laughs> uh, thank you. Um, but uh, if we look at it uh, uh, in, a, in a different perspective, all right, let's kind of with this for a little second before I, I give you my thoughts as well. Um, George, what do you think should be contained within a love poem? What, what would you expect to see within a love poem? Um, uh, like lots of description, right? So, so sort of description of the person that they're saying that they're expressing the love towards, sort of thing. Uh, yeah. Yeah. No. So your eyes are like two suns and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Okay. Leon, what about you? What do you think a love poem should look like? On what? Sorry, sir. A love poem, what do you think it should look like? What what should it contain, a love poem? Well, obviously, something to show your affection towards whoever you're writing it for. But apart from that, I don't feel like it needs to contain anything. It's how... It's basically like an art. It's how you interpret it yourself, which sort of matters. Right, yeah, thanks. Yeah, I mean, and again, so that begins to that art unfolds a different way. Um, because here, I'm thinking that maybe some of us, we, we, if we tend to think about if I would, right, let's play this game a wee bit. Um, hopefully, you can name some. <laughs> um, Leon, could you name someone that you think uh, who, who is regarded as a love poet who's written love poetry? Can you name somebody from literature, obviously?
Who's who's famous? I'll throw this question at anybody now. Who's famous for writing love poetry? Shakespeare. Yeah, he, he wrote 154 sonnets, did he not? Um, which were all love poems, 14 lines long. Um, 50% 50, 50 of the poems were to a woman, 50% of the poems were to a man as well, uh, as well sort of thing. Um, so you got that, and again, I think maybe we, we tend, with love poetry, we tend to think of it maybe in that old fashioned way. Um, so we think it's somebody's from the past, dead, and they use this kind of maybe sort of, um, Old fat, what you may, what you regard as me, sort of old fashioned language, and have you know, it, it used similes, it would use imagery, all that sort of things, and make comparisons to the heavens and things of beauty and all that sort of stuff. Maybe, don't you think that maybe here's a thought that I'm just going to pop down here, and this is sort of tapping into um, what Leon was was saying about you know, sort of perspective and point of view. Um, What we're thinking about here is context, I think. And he, he is a really down to earth man. If you go and have a, a little look at him on YouTube um, at the end of the lesson, uh, you, you'll see this. And, and, and see, listen to him being interviewed. Well, he's quite a captivating person to, to listen to. Um, and is it not just a case here that in, in his, he's showing that poetry doesn't have to be something for you know the elite, it doesn't have to be exclusive, it doesn't have to be using a language which some people might find impenetrable, uh, be put off or scared by. He's just using everyday language to express his emotions. And he's highlighting it as well through his kind of everyday experience. It's things that are common to him. It's things, you know, a part of of, of his life. And it's, a, and it's a kind of great, easiest way for him to make sense of the feelings and the comparison. It's the things that maybe he esteems, holds, you know, dear, like the, you know, like the car, whatever. It's all those sorts of things. But also quite a few of these things that he compares to, you know, they are essential things within life. Um, you know, that he's talking about the, you know, the electric meter for heat and things like that. Um, you know, right, okay, if I clean up, I clean it up. You know, it, it, it's things that are part and parcel of everyday life. And again, that's maybe about, you know, the way the expression is getting made here. Um, and we always, you know, we think maybe the language is a little bit simplistic here, but that, does that take away from the depth of the feeling, the expression of the emotion? Um, begin to think about things like that. Um, but yeah, it is. On first reading, you just think, and again, what he is putting here as well, undoubtedly, is there is a sense of humour behind this as well. There's playfulness. And, you know, we, we just think, is he being serious or... Is he, is he just doing this to kind of make a point? OK, so there's kind of example one. And now we're going to have a second one here um, by a poet, Jackie Kay. Uh, Jackie Kay is from my native Scotland. Um, and just going to read through her poem here and again, going to get your reactions um, to this. And uh, also do a little bit of a compare and contrast against the so to get a compare and contrast between the, the two poems do we think maybe this one is a bit more conventional does it get across that idea okay so the poem is titled uh, double trouble um we were rich and poor we were bought and sold we were black and white we were young and old we were life and death we were north and south we were hand in hand we were foot and mouth we were good and bad we were war and peace we were day and night we were man and beast. We were hunger and greed. We were water and land. We were empty and full. We were lost and found. We had two strings to our bow. We were in it together. We were the spitting image. We were the doppelganger. 
We were the terrible twins, we were happy and sad. We were alter ego, we were sane and mad. We were two-faced, we were two a penny. We spat double or quits, we sneered double the money. We liked to two time, we stayed in a twin town. We led a double life, we lived in a two up, two down. We were too much, we were entwined. We were a right pair, we were in two minds. We peered through bifocals, we talked in double entendres. We walked double quick, we never wandered. We were a double act, we were Morecambe and Wise. We were Laurel and Hardy, we were Jekyll and Hyde. We were Romeo and Juliet, we were tragedy and comedy. We dreamt in a double bed, we were fluently bilingual. We were in two minds, we were never single. We drove in dual, dual carriageways, we insisted on equal pay. We were twinned, we were mated, we loved and we hated. We could not be separated, we could not be separated. Okay, so again, give you a bit of time, just read through yourself. Um, and then I want you to pop down your reaction, okay, to that poem. And think about it in comparison to, um, obviously, I want to be yours. Is this one more conventionally um, an idea of love? If so, how? Um, what do you notice is going on in this one? Again, both poems use fairly straightforward, simplistic language. OK, so I will give you now, it's just gone 1542. I'll give you until 10 to 4. And then we'll get a little bit of feedback just to round off the lesson. OK.
Okay, and shall we just quickly get some ideas before we uh, depart at the end of the day here? So, uh, Lottie, what did you make of this one? Did you like this one a bit better? Was it more conventional than the uh, I want to be yours? What's your thoughts? Um, to me, it seemed more like a love poem than the other one. Mm -hmm. And wh why do you think that? Why that? Why do you think that? Um, I don't know. It just, um, it was like explaining of like, I don't know, like who they were talking about, but like the two people and, and like the thing they were together. It seemed yeah. more like a love poem than the other one. Yeah, yeah. Because, because you, that's it. you did have a real sense of a couple there, didn't you? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, Leon, um, what about you? What, what do you think of this one? Uh, it's a bit more tame than the last one, and I'd say it's probably better because it's not so overboard with everything that it's doing. Okay, yeah. Thank you. Um, George, how do you react to this one? Um, it creates it has an impact on the reader. Yeah, how, how does it do that, do you think? Uh, um, I think it's nicer to read. Okay, what, what what makes it nicer to read for you? Because instead of like long pages with paragraphs that are like two pages long, it's just short, punchy lines. Right. So yeah. So yeah. it's yeah. You, you, you like the couplet concept. Okay. Thank you. Um, Christian, how about you? You there, Christian? Yeah, can you hear? No. Um, Matthew, how about you? How'd you react to it? Two of them dumbstruck by the power of Jackie Kay. Um, Jess, what do you think of it? In a way, it's kind of similar to the other one. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, the language is different and everything, but they're kind of both confessing like the future love that they're willing to offer. Yeah. And, and kind of both quite in it, like. Like imaginary as well as in more again again they're both like written from the heart obviously they've both got different ways of showing it but i feel like they both they both have quite a similar meaning yeah i mean i mean they can do i mean again and, and if we look at it in some ways they they are quite straightforward in the structure and the style especially in the use of rhyme patterns things like that and the language on the whole is pretty straightforward. Um, you only get the odd word, which you might be thinking, Ooh, what's that? You know, like bifocals and double long tongue, which you might pinch it a bit. But everything is, is pretty conventional in the style of language and straightforward. And a, and a nice way that you, you express that, you know, written from the heart. Um, that's a good way to think of that. Thank you. Um, Kimmy, what about you? The fact that um, this um, it's simple, but it's good in the way that it's written. Mm. Um, and hopefully you'll have kind of noticed here um, what what is going all the way through this poem, isn't it? It's opposites, you know, rich and poor, bought and sold, black and white, young and old, life and death. And so we're getting this idea, isn't it, of, I'm sure you'll have heard of the expression, as I'm just putting it in here, you know, it's this idea about Oops. 
you know, and again, it's that sense that they are polar opposites here, but they have been, you know, they've, they've been drawn together uh, until, you know, uh, 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 some of them as well, though, um, you know, get that kind of split personality thing, Jekyll and Hyde, uh, double acts, Laurel and Hardy, Morgan and Wise, that sort of thing. They go together, tragedy and comedy. Um, but that idea at the end, though, is almost like that, you know, the, that, that inseparable, that, that's this overriding message here. Um, you know, nothing can, can can part them. And again, it's all kind of sort of life's experiences there. And you get, you get a sense of them, you know, it's about almost like growing up together as well, isn't it? You know, all these sort of things that they've gone through in life. Um, you know, and just a lot of the expressions that are brought in to explain, explain themselves. And it is that constant, constant, constant use of we, isn't it, throughout. Um, creates, um, whoops, it, it creates that relationship, it, it, it pops it there, it makes it strong um, throughout. Now one way to do this, and again, because it's obviously about, as you can see here, it is great to read this poem out loud with somebody else, and um, because it, it's about two people, and it's like each would have a line, wouldn't they, you know, like you, again, it's like person, you know, speaker one, speaker two, all the way through, um, and I think it's a good idea, and hopefully some of you away from the from the glare of them of the, the, the what you call it uh, you know, the screens here sort of thing might try it out those of you with siblings you know try it out with your sibling you know um, that sort of idea or try it out with a friend uh, do it you know you can do it over um, the internet with each other sort of thing I'm hoping that somebody might 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 just get um, the, the 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 sort of uh, the courage to again record that on a flip because it worked well and you can do it just as audio on Flipgrid uh, and that'd be quite good because it's then you're focusing on on the words that are being spoken so you can just do it as an audio recording and you could each take it in turn uh, and it'd be really good uh, if somebody were to do that um, just dropping that out there you know, uh, now that, you, know you know you may get suitable recompense for this because um we are hoping that people will use this this week um, and I say, in the best, the best recitations, uh, well, at a, a future date, probably just after half term, be be given some uh, chocolate by way of recompense and, and as reward for all this, you know, uh, hard work and endeavour. But again, it's just something to maybe have a bit of a fun with. Um, so you know, just sort of planting that thought there. Now, uh, looking ahead a little bit, just before we, we go to tomorrow, uh, what's going to happen tomorrow is we're going to be looking at about um, how you define love. Um, what you think love is about. So we may be thinking about that over overnight, I think. And then we take you into the Poetry by Heart link. And we're going to sort of show you where those groupings of poetry is kept there. But then you'll be going off to do some research of your own. And you're going to come back and have a poem that you think really kind of represents that concept, that idea of love. And it can be an expression to anybody, um, which we'll go into a bit more detail tomorrow. Um, it doesn't have to be that, you know, two lovers, that sort of thing. You know, love comes in all shapes and sizes about uh, different things. Uh, and that's what we'll be looking for there. And it'll be good to get a little compilation of those, I think, as well. And we'll talk about, you know, how, you know, modern music very often uses, you know, that, that concept of love poetry, taking it into lyrics and things like that. Okay. So, are we off at it? Whoops. Yeah, that takes us very neatly, very neatly um, to the end of today's lesson. OK, so um, have a, a good sort of a rest overnight. And again, I believe we're I've got you tomorrow morning first lesson. I do believe. Yeah, period one. So I'll, I'll be seeing you all again for period one tomorrow. OK, thank you for today and see you tomorrow. Thanks, sir. Okay, thank you.